Thank you everyone for joining us. The Historical Society of Santa Rosa will be presenting tonight's special event with Jeremy Dwight Nichols. We have for you the secrets of Santa Rosa cemeteries. And we will begin shortly as we allow more participants into the event. Thank you for your patience. As we're joined by a few more patients right now, we are just about at 55 of those 100 RSVPs that have thank you for pre-registering for this special event tonight. We will introduce you to our very special guest. It is my honor to be your MC tonight. My name is Leslie Graves and I will be facilitating your questions and answers later this evening. And currently we will introduce you to our guest, Jeremy Dwight Nichols. He is a retired Silicon Valley manufacturing engineer with a physics degree who is the author of Cemeteries of Sonoma County, California a History and Guide that was published in 2001, and also Potter's Field, the Chenate Historical Cemetery in Santa Rosa published in 2009. Later this evening, we will give you a chance to take a look at the covers of those books and tell you about how to get yourself a copy. Jeremy is a described self self described cemeterian. So as a local historian, he is actually responsible for the rediscovery and restoration of the Chenate historic cemetery. In 2003, he was the recipient of the Sonoma County Historical Society's Jean Thurlow Miller Award. And he also served as the Sonoma County Historical Society's president. Just found out he was actually president for nine full years. That's quite some term. So at this time, I want to remind those participants that are joining us. We're about up to 60, so we're going to be getting going right now. Is that our presentation will be a full hour long by Jeremy. We are tickled to be able to do this. And after that hour, we will be holding a Q&A with Jeremy. And your questions are welcome in the chat area of the presentation. Our attendees tonight are much like you would be in an auditorium where you will be watching the presenter but unable to ask questions aloud. You will just be doing it on our chat. So thank you once again to the Historical Society of Santa Rosa for presenting this. And at this time, we introduce you and bring you Jeremy Dwight Nichols. Good evening, everyone. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to uh, listen to me talk about secrets of Santa Rosa cemeteries. I got involved in cemetery research through no fault of my own. I was doing some research on my own family members and discovered that some distant relatives married into a long family in the Geyserville area and were buried there. Well, it took me weeks to find the Long Family Cemetery because it was never written down anywhere where it was located. And I didn't know 
very many people. I was relatively new to Sonoma County. And uh, uh, when I finally found it, I was complaining to Linda Phillips, who was at that time the local history and genealogy librarian in Santa Rosa, about the lack of a book on Sonoma County cemeteries. And she said, good idea, Jeremy, why don't you do that? Well, I thought, how hard could it be? And I figured there couldn't be only a few cemeteries. As it turns out, I was way wrong. There's over 130 cemeteries in the county. And uh, so that eventually resulted in, in my first book. Now, if we go on to the second slide, you will see my take on studying history. History should be studied in the morning before anything else can happen. And relative to what I'm talking about, a lot of my research was done almost 20 years ago now, and it means that things have changed, and some of the things in my book may no longer be accurate. So keep that in mind, and if you do find any errors or omissions or additions, please let me know. Now, I see cemeteries like history books. Each person in the cemetery is a chapter in the book, and of course, as we know, cemeteries have hundreds or even thousands of chapters so right away, Leslie and I realized that I wasn't going to have time to talk about cemeteries in all of Sonoma County. We would be here forever. So we decided to cut it back to just Santa Rosa. And even then, I'm not going to be able to go into a tremendous amount of detail. We just don't have enough time. I could, I could talk for hours about each cemetery in Santa Rosa, and we don't have that much time. So I'm going to pick out unusual things to talk about uh, the cemeteries in the city of Santa Rosa. And the first one I'd like to talk about is Cowie and Fowler. Now, Thomas Cowie and George Fowler were members of the Bear Flag Revolt which captured Sonoma in 1846 and is a big deal if you're from Sonoma County and especially the city of Sonoma and nobody else has heard of it at all. In any case, Cowie and Fowler were young men who were told to go up to the Healdsburg area where the Fitch Rancho was being managed by Moses Carson. He was a brother of Kit Carson, the scout that you've all heard of. Cowie and Fowler were told to be careful and avoid the Carrillo Rancho because they could be captured. And unfortunately, they were careless and they did get captured by uh, banditos, basically, who were using the Mexican army as an excuse to run riot and, and try to stop the Bear Flag men. Cowie and Fowler were taken by these banditos just north of the Rancho line. Mrs. Carrillo, no dummy, said, I don't want trouble, don't do anything to them on my property. So they took them just north roughly where Hidden Valley is today, and killed and left the bodies. And an, an Indian by the name of Sinead found the bodies, went up to the Fitch Rancho, told Moses Carson he came and buried them. And the, the location of the graves, we think we know where it is, but we haven't been able to find the bodies. Now this sign, that you're looking at was placed in the area many years ago by we don't know who. And when the area was developed, the Sonoma County Historical Society took the sign 
and gave it to the Sonoma County Museum, excuse me, it's now the Museum of Sonoma County, and that's where it is today. The interesting thing here is that when the roads in this area were named, they, they chose to reward the Indian Chenate by naming what had been County Farm Road for him. So it's now called Chenate Road. On the other hand, the local tribes that I have spoken to say Chenate does not sound like a name that they would have used. So the whole thing is still a mystery, but that is what happened historically. And a lot of times we end up with things in our history that we don't really even understand. This is one of them. Now in the Hidden Valley area is this vacant lot. It's the only vacant lot on Hidden Valley Drive. It was the site of the first county cemetery. When the county bought the property, which, which they're now selling on Chenate Road, it was a 100 acre farm. They bought it for, for $5,000 from Lewis Murdoch. This was the southeastern corner. They had their first cemetery in there. As near as I can tell, because there are no records, there are perhaps two or three dozen people buried there. We have no idea who. There's no sign of any kind, just the vacant lot, as you can see. I checked it out the other day. It's still there. A few years after they started using it, they abandoned it and started a new cemetery on the other side of the property. This is still there. I have talked to the county about developing it, and so far it's gone nowhere. On the other side of the Chenate property is the county cemetery that was used between 1876 and 1944. In 1944, near the end of World War II, the cemetery got full and they abandoned it and bought a piece of Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery, which is today's county cemetery. I discovered this cemetery when I was researching for my cemetery book, contacted the county, asked if we could restore the cemetery. They gave me permission and with volunteers and donated money, we tracked down over 1,300 names of people buried there, over 1,500 graves, and we put up monuments. Since, since we didn't know who was buried in each grave, we instead put up a series of bronze plaques. There are four of them. You can see two in the picture. And these have every name that I was able to find. We're still missing a couple of hundred people. Um, you get back in the 1870s and 80s, there weren't a lot of good records. The, the recent sale of the Chenate property to developers from Southern California, you may have read about in the paper, the cemetery is part of the sale. So it will have new owners and hopefully they will take care of it. Another little cemetery north of there, off of Parker Hill Road, is the Catron or Catron Family Cemetery. This is an interesting problem that happens. The family sold this whole property, uh, quite a few acres, to developers years ago and reserved the cemetery. Unfortunately, the developers either didn't know or chose to ignore that, and they bulldozed the cemetery. When the family discovered that, they filed a lawsuit, and the court forced the developer 
to restore the cemetery, they poured that concrete slab that you can see there and imprinted all the names in it. The pieces of tombstone were gradually uh, brought back by family members. The whole neighborhood burned in the fires in 2017, and this house, which has the cemetery in its front yard, is finally, after three years, being rebuilt. And I don't know whether this is a new owner or the owner that had it during the fires. But in any case, these people have the unique decoration of a cemetery in their front yard. Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery is the largest cemetery. It's, it, it's over 5,000 graves, the largest one except for Santa Rosa Memorial. And obviously we don't have time to talk about everybody in it, but I did want to talk about Young Moon. This is the only Chinese tombstone in rural cemetery. Back in the 1800s, when the Chinese came here to work on the railroad and to farm, there was a tremendous amount of prejudice. And one of the things that was evidence of this prejudice was an unwritten rule that the Chinese could not be buried in any of our local cemeteries. The excuse was that most of the cemeteries were Christian and the Chinese in that era were pagans. However, I've researched this and spoken to a lot of local Chinese. We feel that is just an excuse. They, they wanted the Chinese to feel unwanted and they wanted to get rid of them. And this was just one way of putting pressure on them. Well, in the 1930s, Young Moon was the steward at the Santa Rosa Elks Club. And they really loved this guy. He was their good buddy. And when he died in 1937, they said, we will take care of the funeral and he will be buried in rural cemetery and nobody's gonna say anything about it and doggone, they did. So that is the first Chinese burial in rural cemetery. And as far as I know, it's the only Chinese tombstone in all of rural cemetery. Next to rural cemetery is Oddfellows Cemetery. It is still owned by the Oddfellows today. Most of the tombstones in Oddfellows look just like the tombstones in Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery. A lot of people don't even realize they've walked from one into the other. There's, there's only a decrepit fence in between the two and you don't even realize you've gone from one to the other. Ripley was, as you know, a native of Santa Rosa. He was the author and artist of Ripley's Believe It or Not, which was a very popular newspaper feature in the 20th century. Ripley product expanded over the years to into radio and television and a chain of museums. There's a, there's a Ripley's Believe It or Not museum in San Francisco. And the one other thing I will note is that according to Wikipedia, Ripley is buried in Odd Fellows Lawn Cemetery, which he is not. The Lawn Cemetery is, is next door. So that's an error that I need to correct one of these days. The Odd Fellows Lawn Cemetery, that is the green area. All the markers are flat in the ground and there's the big mausoleum building in it. This is a family member of mine. This is my grandmother's brother-in-law, John Owens. He 
killed his wife's boyfriend and was sentenced to life in Folsom Prison. He actually served 10 years and was paroled, came back to Healdsburg, his home at the time, lived the rest of his life, and he is buried in Oddfellows Lawn Cemetery. The pictures I was able to get from the state of California, they still have his parole file, and I was able to get copies of the pictures. So I thought that was kind of neat. Next to Oddfellows Lawn Cemetery is Santa Rosa Memorial Park, which is also owned by the Oddfellows, but it is managed for them by the Santa Rosa Memorial Park Company. One of the graves there belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Holiday. Now they were originally buried on their ranch in Rincon Valley. And when the family decided to sell the ranch to a developer, they had the graves moved to Memorial Park. The problem is that there's a flaw in the county's procedure for this sort of thing. They have a, a permit and you have to pay a fee to move a body. In this particular case, one copy of the permit goes to the outgoing cemetery, one copy of the permit goes to the new cemetery, and the county keeps a copy. The problem is the, the outgoing cemetery, well, there really wasn't an outgoing cemetery. It was just property that was developed. So we have no idea what happened to that copy of the form. The incoming cemetery, we didn't know where it was. And the county's copy, well, the county throws their copy away after a year. So it was gone. So nobody knew where these people had gone. I got lucky and ran into a deputy sheriff who used to work for the coroner's office and he remembered when they were moved. And he said, I think they're in Memorial Park and I went there and doggone, there they are. A famous local person originally from Massachusetts is Luther Burbank, who invented the Burbank russet potato, sold the rights to the potato for enough money to move to Santa Rosa in 1875. He was called the plant wizard, but he didn't like that because it said, he said that it implied that he did what he did by magic and he said it wasn't magic, it was hard work. He died in 1926 and he was buried on the grounds of his property in an unmarked grave. It's still there and you can visit the Luther Burbank Memorial Home and Gardens today. Further south on Santa Rosa Avenue is the Neptune Society and the Chapel of the Chimes. The Neptune Society promotes cremation and the Chapel of the Chimes provides a place where you can put your uh, relatives ashes. They have a place for uh, you can have yourself uh, embalmed and put away. There's some people don't like the idea of buried in the ground, being buried in the ground where you might be eaten by worms and things. And so this above ground burial has been popular for actually thousands of years. And the Chapel of the Chimes is one place where you can do that in Santa Rosa. The Mausoleum and Oddfellows Lawn Cemetery is the other place where you can do that in Santa Rosa. There are some people who object to cremation for religious reasons, but it has gotten more, uh, more popular lately, primarily due to the expense of burial.
A little further south and east on Bennett Valley Road is Calvary Cemetery. And I couldn't find anything really interesting to say about it other than they have a pauper section. This is for people who don't have any money. If you are a good son of the church, they will bury you there, even if you don't have enough money to buy a grave. And actually, all of the large cemeteries in the area will do that. They just don't advertise it very much. We're actually making better time than I thought. I suppose I should have talked more. The Pythian Cemetery is in Los Gilicos. Now, Los Gilicos was first settled in the 1850s. A man by the name of Hood bought the property and built a large home in 1858 for himself and his bride. The home is still there. It belongs to the county now and they're trying to make it into a county park. In, eight, in 1924, the Knights of Pythias bought this property to be a Pythian home, which was for elderly members of the Knights of Pythias, uh, both the members and their wives, they could spend the rest of their life in this Pythian home. And a lot of them did. And because they died there, they were buried there. They had their own cemetery. The graves are all marked either with wooden markers, which mostly have disintegrated, or with bronze markers. You can see one of them there in the picture. After the cemetery was filled, it was covered with asphalt to seal it. And uh, uh, it's, it's still there today. Now, the Pythians sold the property to the state of California in 1945, and the state used it as a, a, a juvenile delinquent prison, if you will. Uh, that was transferred to Sonoma County in the 1970s, the orphanage is there, and the juvenile justice center is there. The, the Pythian Cemetery is still there. It's difficult to visit because it's close to the juvenile justice center, and there are security issues. Uh, but I have been there a number of times. We've done some restoration work and uh, it would be nice if we could do more, but that is very much up to the county. Lastly, I want to mention the Bennett Valley Cemetery. Apparently, there were a number of questions about this. The Bennett Valley Cemetery actually isn't in Santa Rosa. It's just outside of the boundaries, and I wasn't going to talk about it until Leslie suggested maybe I could put it in as an, as an extra. This beautiful sign and stone monument wasn't there when I found the cemetery 20 years ago. In fact, I had a really difficult time finding the cemetery because the address took me to a home in Santa Rosa, which clearly was not a cemetery. I eventually discovered that the address was the home of the treasurer of the Bennett Valley Cemetery Association. And somebody who was doing an index to cemeteries just put that in as the address, even though that isn't where the cemetery is. The Bennett Valley Cemetery is Sonoma County Landmark number 39. That was established in 1979 
when the cemetery was exactly a hundred years old. So that's, that's it. Um, I guess we're going to have to expand our questions a little bit. I talked too fast. My books are both available on Amazon, both the, the Cemetery and Guide and Potter's Field, which is about the Sinead Historic Cemetery. So does anyone have any questions? Yeah, the, the questions are open at this time. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Leave it to a uh, manufacturing engineer with a physics degree to be more efficient than we had planned. Um, everybody, you just, you saw efficiency in action right there. Um, and remember that that chat area, as well as the Q&A, you can ask your questions. And we do have a few questions that are coming in. Before we get to those questions, though, I want to make mention of our host for this evening, which is the Historical Society of Santa Rosa. Um, I had made mention of the Historical uh, Society of Sonoma County earlier, in which Jeremy was a president formerly of that organization. This particular event is being presented to you by the Historical Society of Santa Rosa. And it is also live on Facebook. So we appreciate those folks that are joining us live on Facebook as well. If you're interested in learning more about the Historical Society of Santa Rosa, please do visit the website. It is on the bottom of the screen right now. It's www.historicalsocietysantarosa.org. And our first question, Jeremy, came from uh, Liza, Liza Del, Del Rosio. Rosaro, and she actually asked about birth certificates. Um, nothing more specific than that, but do you do some of your research by looking also up the birth certificates after you have found a particular grave, or does that put you in search of a particular grave site? Okay, that's a good question. Um, formal birth, death, and marriage certificates didn't start in California until 1905. So a lot of people buried in the early years here in Santa Rosa and Sonoma County didn't have birth certificates. A lot of people moved to California from other states, so they may have a birth certificate in the state in which they were born. Uh, so primarily I used death certificates uh, because a lot of them are available. Before 1905, there were death records. Uh, they are, how shall we say it? They're, they're, some people have death records and some people don't and you never know. Uh, almost seems to be guaranteed if it's somebody you're interested in, they don't have a death certificate. But there, there are records uh, floating around and uh, you can track them down. The library in Santa Rosa, the local history and genealogy library that is part of the main library at 3rd and E is a really good place to start. That's where I started 20 years ago. That's a, it is a great resource in our community. Um, going more to, I'm going to just kind of switch back and forth. Folks are using both platforms. Thank you, everybody, for asking your questions. And we, we do have them rolling in. So I am glad that we have more time to, to uh, devote to these questions. Here is uh, something that, Jeremy, oh, I think a lot of folks are sharing this message to you. Zeke Ortiz says, stoked with an exclamation point. Thank you for holding this event. So I'm going to put that thanks on to you, Jeremy, as well as the Santa Rosa Historical Society, uh, well, Historical Society of Santa Rosa, excuse me. Uh, so we're all stoked to have you here, Jeremy. Uh, and then our next question from the chat room is from none other than uh, the 
former director of that historical, uh, the history and genealogy library uh, downtown, Catherine Reinhardt, brings us this question. Does the county have a list of all those buried in the Pythian Cemetery? Would you happen to know that? That's a good question, and the answer is no, the county does not. I have a partial list um, assembled from the markers in the cemetery and also from death certificates, which as you know, we can no longer get at. Uh, it is possible that the Pythians themselves have a list. Uh, the, the Knights of Pythias still exist. The closest chapter is in Los Angeles. The uh, secretary whom I spoke to once or twice is an attorney. The man is very busy and he just did not have very much time to work with me. Uh, so I would say uh, that we do not at the moment have a complete list to everybody in the cemetery and that's probably a project that you should do, Catherine. <laughs> uh oh, oh, Jeremy, you're going to start something right there. Cat Catherine's always up for a good project. Um, everybody, please do look up Catherine J. Langhart. She's a local historian down in Petaluma and has written uh, some some great work about Petaluma down there. And uh, Catherine, I think now it's it's jockeyed over to you for another project there. Um, nice to see you on chat. And this is a question from Jeanette McClelland. Uh, she asks over in the Q&A, what's been your most interesting and exciting find to date, Jeremy? Do you have any, uh, one that you could talk to us about? Gosh, most interesting. No. Oh. Well, I suppose finding the the cemetery that that no i'll t i'll tell you the one that was really exciting i had heard from my family that my mother's uncle george was buried in healdsburg even though he lived in sacramento for many many years he lived in the worth hotel on k street in sacramento but when he died he was buried in healdsburg before I lived here in Santa Rosa, I was down in Santa Clara working. And when we came up here, I said, I want to go visit Uncle George's grave to pay my respects. So I went up to Healdsburg, found the cemetery, finally found the grave and buried next to him was his older brother and his older brother's wife. And I had no idea they had even come to California, much less, list, much less lived in Healdsburg in Sonoma County. And that was so exciting. And basically that is how I got involved in this whole thing. Every family has to have a, a Uncle George. And I'm glad that Uncle George uh, got you involved in this project. So we're going over to our chat area. And Denise Hill from the Historical Society of Santa Rosa uh, brings you this question. Can you tell us about the cemetery that's located on Burnville Road and uh, Willowside Road at Willowside, that intersection there? Yes. Uh, that is the Steele family cemetery. This is a different Steele family that, than the Steele family that Steele Lane is named for. Uh, but there was a Steele family living there and that's their family cemetery. And I have about oh, six or eight names of people who are buried in there and it's in my cemetery book. And I, I know I've, I've met the guy who currently owns the property and he basically just leaves it alone. And he's very respectful of it. It's not his family, so he doesn't have a personal interest. 
Great. Excuse me. Moving on to the uh, Q and A area, we've got a question from Amber Tidro, and she says, "Hi, Jeremy. Are there any future plans of using ground penetrating radar?" Uh, at the GPR at any of these cemeteries where the grave locations are unknown. Do you know anything about the, the GPR devices? Okay, yes. Yeah. In, in, in fact, we have used GPR and cadaver sniffing dogs to try to find the graves of Cowie and Fowler. And we have used GPR uh, trying to find Mark West's uh, family cemetery north of Santa Rosa. So yes, that has been done. Um, it's difficult. A lot of these cemeteries are hilly and rocky and GPR works best when the ground is nice and flat. So it, it has been done. Uh, in fact, there's a section in the Sinead Cemetery that I'd like to do that in one of these days. Great suggestion. Thanks, Amber, for that. Um, moving on to the chat, we're going to Christine Thomas. Uh, she says, a great info. Jeremy, is there any info on the old hospital at the Shanique property where uh, maybe the patients had been buried? Any info on the doctor who had worked there? That sounds like there's a mystery there waiting to be told or um, little inside information that she's talking about? Yes, in fact, that is the subject of my next book. The, the county hospital actually dates from 1859, when the first uh, infirmary or medical room was created on top of the county jail on 4th Street, where Exchange Bank is today. Later, a real hospital was built on Humboldt Street and finally on the Sinead property, uh, an, a new hospital was built in 1887. Then the current old hospital that Sutter just moved out of was built in 1937 and expanded in the 50s and the 70s and as you know, is, is now abandoned. Um, most of the people who died at the old hospital were buried there in, the, in what's now the Sinead Historic Cemetery. If it was after the 1940s, they were buried in the new county cemetery behind rural cemetery. And the doctor, Back in those days, before the 1920s, let's say, the county had an officer who was called the county physician. It was an official county physician that was elected by the supervisors once a year. And this doctor, and was always a man in those days, this doctor um, took care of the county hospital and all of the people who were in it. Uh, he also had responsible uh, responsibility for the county almshouse, which was kind of a public old folks home. If you were old and decrepit and couldn't take care of yourself anymore and didn't have any family to take care of you, you could go and stay with the county and they would take care of you and bury you after you died. So uh, quite a number of people served as county physician, and I know who they all are, and uh, short biographies of those doctors will form part of my new book when I get it done. Great. And Christine, I do see that you, you asked that question in a couple different places. So um, we're going to move on to Vicki Duggan um, ask the question about, about the Shanique, since you're on that topic. Is that, where exactly is that located, that, that Shanique? Is that okay, the, the cemetery is on the south side of Shanique Road. If you go up 
Section 8 road from Mendocino, you come to the traffic light, which is marked Hus Drive. The, the former Setter Hospital is to the left, and to the right is Norton Psychiatric, which used to be a tuberculosis sanatorium. And to the right of the sanatorium is the cemetery. It's an acre and a half. The monument is in front. It's, it's easy to find. Great. I think there are, There's over 1,500 people buried there. With good weather this weekend, and being that it's Halloween on, on Saturday, we might see a few more pedestrians up that way on Saturday, I would imagine, after this presentation. You've definitely given some inspiration to folks. And talking about inspiration right here, Jeremy, um, Erica Ramirez writes hello to you and says that she's writing her thesis on the on a pauper cemetery um, in the North Bay. What are some of the uh, cemeteries that that had these pauper grave sites for those that didn't have the funds uh, that she can do research in Sonoma County? You said all of the major cemeteries had had those areas. They they do. They they don't talk about it. Um, it's it's interesting, you know. Sonoma County has always been very good about taking care of people who had medical problems or were poor. Uh, you know, the the standard widows and orphans thing but they didn't brag about it very much. It, it, it's not something that the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce puts on the sign at the entrance to Santa Rosa, come visit our pauper's graveyard, you know? So uh, they're there, but nobody talks about it. Uh, but uh, for example, the, the big cemetery in Petaluma has a, a, a section for poppers. The Catholic Cemetery does. Um, Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery has an area uh, back in a corner. I have been there where, where people who didn't have any money could still be buried. Uh, uh, the, uh, the big cemetery in Sebastopol has, a, has a, a couple of areas because that's actually a combination of two or three cemeteries. So yeah, they're, they're around, but uh, there's very little written about, about that. Uh, I mention it in my cemetery book, uh, very little written about it, but if you go talk to the right people at the cemetery, they will tell you about it. Uh, so it sounds like Erica has a little digging to do, um, all pun in, intended on that one, uh, Jeremy. The, it brings up a good question. We can't hear you all laugh right now, but I know you are. Uh, Jeremy, do you want to provide information as to where folks could get a hold of you uh, after this presentation? Is that something that they might be able to ask you more questions? And I want to say that with uh, this preface to it is that we're going to continue these questions and answers till 730. So we, ha we have over half an hour to continue, but we are just getting loads of questions. And um, there might be people like Erica Ramirez out there that that want to contact you afterwards. Is that something you'd like to share with folks? Yeah, I will text. Do, do you have my email? Can, can you post my email? I will. On, on, I will. Uh, on here yeah while you answer the next question i will be posting your email i just want sorry folks i hadn't checked in about that earlier okay um so our next question comes from jo stephen lovejoy and he asks about the pythian cemetery that you've mentioned and you did mention in your presentation that it was paved over uh is that still the case yes it's it's uh, pythian is still paved over um, I was there with a, uh, a, a group of volunteers uh, that were working for 
Sonoma County Regional Parks and we did a big cleanup job and we actually found three real tombstones that were part of the cemetery and appeared to have been moved out of the way when the cemetery was paved over. It's still paved over. Uh, it would be nice if there was some way that, that we could get it restored. I think county is very concerned because of the closeness to the juvenile justice center. Uh, and I, I suspect that they just would rather not have the public there. That's, that's my personal guess. I have never pushed them on the subject. Maybe it's something we ought to talk to them about. Well, I could understand a little privacy maybe is needed, um, but that is a great question for them. I have another question here for you, Jeremy, from uh, Alex. Uh, and Alex over in the question and answer area says, I've noted that a series of Japanese tombstones within the rural cemetery are broken. Uh, do you know if this was a reaction to the Pearl Harbor incident? Mm. Mm. There, there are Japanese tombstones in rural. And this is interesting. You notice how the Japanese were more accepted than the Chinese. And you would think if you were going to be prejudiced against people from the Far East, you'd be prejudiced against all of them. But it turns out the Japanese were here for a different reason. The Chinese who came over in the 1850s and afterwards were primarily economic migrants. They had families back in China, primarily Southern China, Times were very bad in China and they came to the United States to the land of the Golden Mountain where they were going to make their fortune and go home and live like kings. And a very few of them actually did. But most of them just ended up working on farms or working uh, for, for, for people in their home or what have you. But they never intended to stay. Okay, they were expats. Now it's interesting, Americans have worked as expats all over the world. I have. I worked in Algeria for a couple of months when I was a lot younger. And that's okay. But people who come to this country as expats are disliked for some reason or other. And that is what happened to the Chinese. The Japanese that came here brought their families, and they settled, they became permanent residents. And so they were much more accepted. And that is why they're buried in rural cemetery. Now, as far as the broken tombstones, that is something you need to ask specifically to the people who take care of Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery. You can find contact information for them either at the cemetery itself or on the city of Santa Rosa's website because Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery is owned by the city and there's a section for the cemetery on the city's website. So please go to the city of Santa Rosa's website and hunt around and you will find it and they can put you in touch and you can find out why those tombstones are broken because I do not know. But that's a really good question. Thank you for that question, Alex. And um, if I find that link for you, I will put it into the chat area as well about the rural cemetery and the, the city uh, link for that. Moving on to uh, another question about the rural cemetery, the Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery. Uh, are burials still allowed there is asked by Douglas Williams. Thanks, Douglas. Okay, Doug, that's a good question. And the answer is yes, you can have, you can be buried there if 
you have a family member who is already buried there. And in fact, there are about three burials a year in Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery. Obviously, it's mostly full, uh, but yes, you can still be buried there, but only if you have family there. All right, and then bringing it over to uh, Jim over here, he's interested in the Fulkerson Mausoleum in the Rural Cemetery. Um, he's heard that the remains of Richard Fulkerson uh, and his wife Sarah were removed at some point. Richard was an uncle of his great grandmother, so he's interested. And Jim is, uh, Sirocco is asking that question. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, the the Fulkerson monument is part of the Fulkerson Cemetery, which originally was a separate cemetery. I don't know about the bodies being removed, but again, the people who operate Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery can give you more information on that. So I would suggest through the city of Santa Rosa, you contact the restoration committee and and ask them that question. Uh, I have I have seen the uh, Fulkerson uh, location many times, but I've never been inside it. I did find that link, so I will be putting that in the chat area, um, and you can find out more information once I get that there, and you can copy it down. I also want to make mention again of our time right now and it's just before seven o'clock. We'll keep going with Q&A uh, through till 7.30 and uh, Jeremy is just chock full of all kinds of information here and it, it seems that I can't keep notes fast enough so I don't know about our participants. I want to make mention that uh, this presentation is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Historical Society of Santa Rosa's YouTube page uh, so you can access that there. Uh, give us a few hours to get that uploaded and also the recording is happening right now on Facebook Live and that recording will be there and live on the Facebook page as well. So you've got a couple opportunities to access this and, and listen to these answers once again. Um, another question this time from Brett Bright. Uh, he asks about the Pythian Cemetery, is that on county land? Uh, he had heard that it's now on land owned by Ledson Winery and they control who comes and goes and there's a locked fence there. Do you have any information about that? You had talked a little bit about it being hard to get to, but these details, do you know anything about those? I have, I have heard that Ledson owns that land. Uh, the last that I heard, the Pythians still owned the actual piece of property where the cemetery was. Uh, and this, this is something that I need to investigate one of these days with the county recorder and figure out who exactly owns, owns what. Uh, be, because of the proximity of the Juvenile Justice Center, the county doesn't want a lot of traffic back there, and so it's hard to get at. Uh, yes, there is a locked gate. Uh, working with the county, I can get through that gate, but I have to make special arrangements, and I have to have a really good reason and convince them that they ought to let me in. So, yes, that's a question I need to answer one of these days. Who actually owns that? Thank you, good question. All right, you've got, um, people are giving you material for, for your book, um, or maybe your second or third book, book from now. Uh, Noel Peterson asks, what is the oldest grave in the Santa Rosa area, do you know? Well, I suppose Cowie and Fowler, who, whose graves if we knew where they were, date from 1846, would pr 
probably be the oldest. Um, I suspect that the Carrillo family may have buried people right on their property. Uh, and the, the what's left of the Carrillo adobe is still there. Uh, the, the people who would like to uh, do something with the Carrillo adobe have said that they believe that there is a cemetery there, uh, both for family members and for the Indians that they employed uh, on the rancho. So those are probably the oldest. In terms of a formal cemetery, we know that Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery, the, the oldest grave in it is 1854. And that's that's probably the oldest in in the in the city as as far as uh, a modern developed cemetery goes, and all of, all of that the rural cemetery is taken care of by the Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery Preservation Committee, and you can get a hold of them through the city's website. Right, and that link I did post in our in our chat area. If you'd like to. Go ahead and click on that link. You can then uh, save it into your bookmarks. And uh, Denise Hill, once again, up with another question. Really important one. Is there a California law that protects old cemeteries from being built over? Is that actually a, a law here in California? Yes, it is. Uh, the, the state code protects and defines as a cemetery any burial place that has, I believe it's six or more graves. Uh, so that, uh, for example, uh, the, the county cemetery, even though that property is being sold, uh, that's, that's a cemetery, it's protected. It turns out if you find, exhume and move, each individual body in a cemetery and move each body to an individual grave in a new cemetery that is allowed with the proper county permits and you can take a cemetery and move everybody and then you can develop that cemetery and put a house on it if you want to so clearly that is a very expensive uh, process. The old, the first county cemetery in Hidden Valley, for example, I have actually talked to the county about doing that because it's a nice one third acre lot and you could put a house or a duplex there. Uh, it would take some research to figure out how many people were buried there and properly exhume them all, but it could be done, but it's complicated, it's slow, it's expensive. So it isn't very often done. Uh, and as a consequence, most of the cemeteries in Sonoma County are safe. I do know of one cemetery in the Pengrove area that was destroyed by the person who owned the property because he wanted a gravel pit. And I don't think anything was ever done about that. Although I have spoken to people who claim that there are a couple of tombstones still floating around. But for the, for the most part, cemeteries are protected and people seem to be fairly respectful of them. And um, this question kind of goes right in that. And, and Zeke, I'm gonna bring up your question uh, because I, I feel that a good a good haunt needs to be talked about right now do you know any stories especially with halloween being on saturday do you know any stories about haunted cemeteries in santa rosa you just uh you talked about someone um you know kind of desecrating that grave because they wanted a gravel pit i could just imagine that they might be haunted after doing something like that so do you have you heard about haunted cemeteries though in, in santa rosa that's a, that's a good question. I would say that if any cemetery in Santa Rosa is haunted, it's going to be the old county cemetery, the Chenate Cemetery, because uh, the, the people there were, were old and poor 
they were buried by the county and then basically the county just walked away and abandoned them. So if I was going to haunt anybody, uh, that would be a good place to do it. However, uh, I've worked there for years doing the restoration and I never felt any, any malevolence, but I think that's because I was working to restore the cemetery. And so if, if I got any vibes, they were good vibes because I was helping the people who were buried there and abandoned. They are now no longer abandoned. Yeah, and we, I think we are all pretty aware of what's going on with the old hospital up there. So there might be some haunting going on, right, um, in that story. Uh, moving on to Karen Fahey, you're, she says that her mother grew up in Bennett Valley and went to a one-room schoolhouse. And she talked about uh, the cemetery and her grandfather was friends with Luther Burbank. Uh, she says she has no idea where he was buried. How would you find this out? I assume that she's talking about her grandfather. Uh, her mother passed away about five years ago. She would have been uh, 94 if she was still alive. So her grandfather was you know, quite a bit older. She doesn't specify um, when her grandfather passed away, but uh, being friends with Luther Burbank and maybe being, um, maybe being buried in the Bennett Valley Cemetery, it sounds like. I'm trying to kind of piece it together. Uh, Karen, if you can send me any more information, but how, how do you go about, what do you do? And this, this goes right along with, I think Catherine was also asking about your research techniques and, um, you know, where do you, where do you do most of your research and what types of records are most helpful to you? So this can walk us through it using, using, uh, Karen's example there. Okay, that's a, that's a real good question. Uh, the first thing is obviously to find out when did he die, and you you probably ought to start with the local history and genealogy annex part of the Sonoma County Library in downtown Santa Rosa on Third and E Street. There are indices which are available online that list deaths in the state of California. And depending on the year when the man died, you may be able to find him in that index. That will give you his date of death. Uh, once you have the date, you can look in the old copies of the uh, Santa Rosa Press Democrat newspaper for an announcement or an obituary that may say where he's buried. And then thirdly, you can go to the county clerk in Santa Rosa. The Sonoma County Clerk's Office has all of the death certificates. You can get a copy of the death certificate, excuse me, and that will have where he's buried on the death certificate. Then you'll know. And that, that chain of actions on your part is exactly what I do when I'm researching somebody. The, the only other thing that I do, which you basically already have done, is I try to ask the family. Sometimes people may not know exactly, but they will remember more or less, well, you've already done that. So the library, uh, the newspaper, and the death certificate, those are, those are where you want to start. That's great. And just to make a mention for those that may not know is that our county clerk uh, is also our county assessor and our county um, uh, registrar of voters, clerk, assessor, and one more title she has in there. So uh, she's quite the actual person that holds those titles, uh, Diva Marie Proto, is quite busy right now in the midst of our uh, election cycle. 
and, and voting. Our, our voting uh, polls are opening up for in-person voting this Saturday. So if, if you can't get a hold of her right now, maybe maybe just wait until um, at least after this upcoming Tuesday. Uh, but she does have staff in all of those offices. So moving on to Natalie Gosp, uh, she asks, does the property surrounding the original Fountain Grove development have any burial sites that you know of? Okay, there are no burial sites that I know of, but I can tell you, uh, based on my experience and research, that, that there are burials almost everywhere. You can hardly put a shovel in the ground in Sonoma County without uncovering somebody's grave. You have to remember in the, in the pioneer days, there were very few organized cemeteries and most of them were associated with the larger towns, with Sonoma, with Petaluma, with Santa Rosa, with Healdsburg. If you were on your ranch out in the middle of the county someplace and one of your hired hands dropped dead or got run over by a wagon or fell off the barn or what have you, it's the middle of summer, you're busy on the farm, it's 95 degrees, you have no refrigeration, no way to keep a body, and nobody has the time to put the body in a wagon and hitch up a team and drive all the way to Guerneville to turn it over to the local sheriff's deputy who also served as a deputy coroner and say, here's a body, what do you want to do with it? Additionally, this is just a hired hand. You barely know the guy and he owes you money. So you're gonna bury him out behind the barn. You remember where we buried the cow when she died last spring? And then the next door neighbors have a stillborn baby. Well, you say, okay, you can bury it next to the hired hand. And before you know it, you've got a cemetery. That's why we have 130 cemeteries in Sonoma County, because of things like that. And, and I remember one story, people were coming from back east in their covered wagon, right? Just standard thing that you've seen on TV a million times. They stopped overnight at a home somewhere in the valley. Mrs. Traveler was ill and overnight she died. They buried her under one of the trees there on the ranch and then the rest of the family moved on the next day and the grave was basically forgotten. There are graves like that all over Sonoma County. So yes, I'm sure that there are graves in Fountain Grove. We just don't know who or where. Yeah, so those the kind of unofficial uh, cemeteries or burial grounds. And, and this question uh, connects to that quite well, actually. Um, Ellen Bowen asked this question of you, Jeremy. Have you done any research on burial areas of indigenous people, uh, indigenous to this area? And um, she definitely wants to give you a shout out as well about the fact that you're a local treasure and thank you for all of your hard work. But uh, do you know about indigenous burial grounds? Okay, that's a good question. And in fact, when I started working on my cemetery book, I asked myself the question, should I include the Indians in or out? How would they feel? And so I contacted the tribes and I said, do you want to be included? Would you be upset if I didn't? Would you be upset if I did? And they said, the problem is that there is a significant illegal underground market in stolen Indian burial artifacts. And because of that, they do not want the, the public 
us knowing where their burial grounds are. If you are a member of a tribe, you should know where your tribe's burial ground is. If you are a legitimate researcher or have some other reason, you can contact the tribe and if the tribe approves, they will show you the burial ground. Now, I know or suspect where a few of them are, but I keep no records uh, on that. Uh, and there, you know, there, there are records, but they are held very close. Uh, and so I have a chapter on Native American uh, burial grounds in my book, but that's as far as I take it. Because I, I, want, um, I want to respect their right of privacy. That's great. And, and thank you for doing that. And um, I think that we, we have a lot of mending of relationships and your respect of the indigenous peoples uh, of this area helps with that mending. So thank you for, for keeping those secrets and, uh, and being respectful. I want to bring out a comment by Michael Vaughn of Vaughn Reporten. Hi, Michael. Um, he talks about that our participants can check in at the Chapel of, Chapel of the Chimes. It's been owned by Dignity Memorial for a number of years. Um, they have done a fair amount of restoration and they offer cremations and uh, niches for the cremains and a mausoleum burial and in-ground burial. And, um, and so thank you, Michael. I know Michael has done a lot of work in history uh, of Sonoma County as well. Um, and I want to make sure that we kind of keep track of the time. It's about 7.18, so we've got time for these other questions. Um, but Jeremy, I, I, one, of the, one of the great questions I think that is just kind of fun is uh, people are asking, who is that man on the screen right now with that shovel and that top hat? and uh, <laughs> making Jeremy blush a little bit here. Uh, that would be you, right, sir? That's, that's correct. <laughs> the, uh, the top hat and the coat were rented from a local costume store. Uh, my wife has since made me a coat and I bought a top hat. The shovel is mine uh, and the picture was taken by my ne next door neighbor and that's taken in Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery. So that, that is the cemeterian. The cemeterian. Yeah, so I had, I had mentioned that you, you uh, call yourself a cemeterian. Are there other, is that, is that a common term that people ask, uh, that people say that they're a cemeterian if they're a local historian in their area that, that, that helps to restore cemeteries or does research on cemeteries? You know, I, I actually looked up the word uh, because I thought that I had just made it up. Uh, but in fact, cemeterian is, is a real word and it's a person who is an expert in cemeteries. And I, I can't really claim to be an expert, but I know the people who really are the experts and uh, I just thought it was an it was an interesting uh, title, so I, I I took it for myself. Yeah, well, um, you're an expert in all of our eyes, so we'll just keep you there. And a question coming at you right now from Ruth. okay <laughs> from Ruth West is uh, is the Fought Cemetery on county land? And those of you that can't see that question. Uh, FAUGHT, F-A-U-G-H-T, that's up uh, beyond Mark West, if I remember right, like FAUGHT Road, is that true? Yeah, that's right. The, the FAUGHT Cemetery is on FAUGHT Road. Now, I haven't been there since the fires to mm -hmm. see whether uh, it was affected by, the, by any of the fires. I need to go up there one of these days. The FAUGHT Cemetery was restored a number of years ago by two girls uh, from a local school. And uh, they did a really good job cleaning it up. 
as far as I know, the Fott Cemetery is still owned by the Fott family. It's right next to a county park. And in fact, one of the problems in the past was people riding their horses from the county park through the cemetery. And they were trying to get people to stop doing that because they felt it was not respectful. Uh, but it's, as far as I know, it's still there and it's still owned by the family. Great. Um, and Liza comes back with a, a kind of a question uh, talking about uh, the, the Pythian, the property where the Pythian ceremony, ceremony is and out that way, um, that there was a, a shelter for transitioning homeless uh, or people without, without homes. And she wasn't quite sure of the status of that after recent fires. And I can let you know that um, unfortunately those, um, those shelters did burn down the county and um, the organization that they're working closely with is, is looking to either restore those shelters or have them in another area. So that's still being worked on. Um, and that, that's right near the juvenile detention area. So, uh, and then I want to move on to um, Jennifer Spain. This is a, this is a rumor one. Uh, she said that she's heard rumors of an old cemetery in the Burbank Avenue area of Roseland. Um, do you know anything about this? No, I've, I've never heard anything about a cemetery in that area, but it is certainly possible. Um, if, if the person has, has any specific information, I'd like to hear it. it and, and again, it, it could be uh, a little family cemetery from when that was uh, somebody's farm. Right. Well, oh, and as, as far as I know, most of the little houses that were put up for the homeless uh, uh, on, uh, on the Los Gulicos property survived. I think about four of them burned, but the rest of them survived. Now, they, they had temporarily moved the people out during the fires. I don't know whether they've moved them back or not, yeah. but they were there. They were at the front of the property next to Highway 12, the cemetery is on the back of the property behind the Juvenile Justice Center. Right. And um, you talked earlier, and there was a question about the Fountain Grove area and uh, whether there were any burials up in that area. And Karen Stone brings this information forward. She uh, put it out there on chat that that folks could also visit findagrave, all one word, dot com, ancestry.com, and also newspapers.com. That's a great resource right there. Um, and she mentions that Gayla Barron has said in her writings or um, maybe in a presentation that there's probably burials of Chinese laborers in the Fountain Grove area, um, but developers downplayed that when selling the home sites. It kind of sounds a little similar to what you're talking about, is that there might be something up there we don't know about yet. Yeah, entirely possible. Um, I was kind of skipping a few questions just because there were a few people that asked more than one or two questions. So I was trying to catch everybody in there. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit about um, the tombstones that you helped to see return to their rightful place after having been removed. Um, okay, yeah, that's, that's a, a, a good question. I have a, uh, a plan to to replace missing tombstones. Uh, tombstones go away for a number of reasons. Sometimes a cemetery 
uh, is old and abandoned and vandalized and a family will say we don't want grandma's tombstone to be vandalized so we're going to take it home and sometimes the kids are driving around you know after the football game and what could be more fun than to bring a tombstone back to Napa County from Sonoma County. So they've had a few, maybe a few, more than a few, and they grab a tombstone from, from someplace, and it's in the back of the pickup truck, and they go back to Napa or wherever after the football game. And dad finds the tombstone in the back of the pickup truck the next morning. What the hell is this? Oh, we found that. Oh, yeah, right. Well, they don't even remember where they got it. I mean, it was dark, right? So the dad says, get rid of it. So they take it and they dump it in another cemetery. Well, I mean, what else do you do with it, right? And the cemetery people find it and they don't recognize it, it's not one of ours, and it just sits. And I eventually find out about it, figure out where it does belong, and get it back. And I have done that for about a dozen different tombstones now. Uh, some of the tombstones belong in other counties, some of them belong here. Uh, I drove most of the way to Reading one day to bring a tombstone back and got it returned to its cemetery. So that is a very rewarding uh, job to help out the family by getting their tombstone back. And um, I want to make mention of the time right now, Jeremy, with those great answers uh, to all of these questions. We've got two to three more questions left uh, already in the queue, and um, I want to get to those. They're, they're all so important, and this is all so intriguing. Everybody, I keep getting messages that everybody is truly enjoying this. So, um, Jeremy, thank you for your time, and thank you to all of the participants for coming out tonight and asking these great questions. Um, we will be going just a little bit over 7.30 to be able to Field, have Jeremy field the last two to three questions. Like I said, they're already in the queue. Uh, this one is from Helen Johansson. Uh, and I know that I've heard this talk about, been talked about before. She wanted to know if you know anything about the gravestone in the rural cemetery that says, uh, quote unquote, colored boy. Uh, and I know that there's a good uh, story and some research behind that. So can you talk to that at all? I don't know a lot of details about it, but, but yes, there was a, a, a young black boy who was uh, part of a, a, a local white family uh, and, uh, and, and died, uh, and they had him buried there in, in their family's plot in rural cemetery. And as far as they were concerned, he was a member of their family, and by gosh, they were going to bury him with their family and nobody was going to say anything about it and everybody said yes sir whatever you want uh, so it's it's i found it it fascinating that in terms of ranking prejudice black people rated above chinese who rated above indians was basically basically how it was and that sounds terrible but that's how it was um, the, the, the black people, for the most part, you know, yeah, I'm sure there was still prejudice. For the, for the most part, they seem to have been treated fairly well. Uh, I think a lot of this is because a lot of people in Santa Rosa were from the Mid-South and came to California and to Santa Rosa after the Civil War, more or less. So they were used to being around black people because of slavery. 
and uh, the, the Chinese were foreigners, okay? The, the black people may have been black people, but they were, they were our black people. They were Americans, they were family, they were Christians. So they were accepted. It was the Chinese who got spit on. Remember, if you were a little kid in the 1800s in Santa Rosa, all the roads were gravel. So there were lots of rocks. The fun thing to do was to find a Chinese guy and throw rocks at him. And I'm, I'm serious, that actually happened. The black people weren't treated like that. Just how it was. And I think that most of us know, unfortunately, the atrocities that happened to the indigenous people um, at that time during our California history, which would be oh, an amazing uh, event and webinar to, to have uh, talk about as well. But um, and we would want to give that kind of respect to that history. Um, we're going to go ahead and ask our last couple questions here. And uh, this one is about the, the graves that were marked in the old county cemetery with cement filled cans. And uh, can you talk about, was, was that just a function of kind of the importance of that cemetery? I'm, I'm adding to Stephen Lovejoy's question there. Can you tell us about those cement filled cans? Right, now this, the, the county cemetery had very specific rules. Every year they put the contract for burying the indigent dead out to bid. And one or another of the local morticians would get the job of doing this. And they were very specific. They had to have a first class redwood coffin with two coats of stain, it had to be lined, it had to have a pillow, the corpse had to be dressed, including underwear and socks. The body in the coffin had to be taken to the cemetery in a regular, what they, they called it a dead wagon. Today we would call it a hearse. They called it, it, it had to be used, could, couldn't be just anybody's pickup truck, right? Had to be a real hearse. They had to dig the grave six feet deep, bury it normally, and they had to provide a wooden headboard, six inches wide, 32 inches long, with two coats of white paint and the deceased's initials and hospital number in black paint. So all of these white wooden headboards were, and remember there, there's 1,500 burials there. The problem came in 1939 when the TB asylum, which is now Norton Psychiatric was built next door to the cemetery. In 1939, tuberculosis was almost always fatal. The antibiotics that we have today to control it did not exist. So here are these poor people in the TB asylum coughing their lungs out and gradually dying. When they get up and what do they see shining in the morning sun, but this forest of white wooden headboards basically saying, we're waiting for you. And they said it was depressing. They complained to the county and the county took them all out and for every headboard that they took out, they went to the kitchen of the county hospital and they said, give us all your soup cans. Don't throw them away, give it to us. 
and they filled them full of cement and they pressed a number in them and wherever they took a headboard out they put a soup can in they went to the county hospital and they said let us look at all your records and they looked up the initials in the hospital number and they got the names to go with the number in the soup can unfortunately the county records at the hospital only went back about 10 years so if you died and were buried in the old county cemetery in the 1930s roughly we know who you are and we know where you are but if you just died before that time we know who you are and we know where all the graves are but we can't put the names and the graves together that's why i decided to put all the names on these 24 by 36 inch cast bronze plaques since we couldn't mark the graves we could at least have the names on something that is just so that's the story of the soup cans great question thank you for asking the question about the cement built cans that is quite a quite some uh, story there and we're going to go to our our last question and i know that there's um there's more bits and pieces to this and and jeremy has uh, provided us with his email i will post that once again in the chat area but this will be our last question for the evening uh, jean kearns asked this she said that you told the story of young moon i believe uh that was in the rural cemetery if i remember right um and and I might have gotten that wrong, given the restrictions on how people of color were buried in the past. Do you have any insights about where uh, other Chinese people, uh, people of color were buried here in Santa Rosa or in Sonoma County and more information to share about that? Okay, if you were Chinese, you could be buried in the county cemetery. There are about a hundred, as near as I can tell, buried there. I've got names for over 80 of them. You, if you had the money, you could have your body shipped back to China. Uh, there, there was a Chinese cemetery in San Francisco. Some Chinese had their body sent up there. Um, there actually uh, were Chinese burials in Sebastopol. There, there was a pretty good sized Chinatown in Sebastopol in the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s. And there were apparently Chinese burials somewhere in that area, but we don't know exactly where. It was, I was told it was behind the Chevrolet dealer there on the main drag in Sebastopol, but I've never been able to find it. There's, there's nothing left to indicate that there was ever a cemetery there, unfortunately. Well, thank you, Jeremy. And uh, again, uh, I just posted Jeremy's email address in the chat area for those of you that would like to copy that and ask him more questions in the future. Uh, Jeremy had mentioned earlier that he is writing uh, another book and uh, be sure to visit the Historical Society of Santa Rosa's website for a link to this recording in the day ahead. Uh, their website is uh, www.historicalsocietysantarosa.org. And um, some thanks are coming in about this webinar and the presentation, and folks are looking forward to more presentations in the future. Um, I also want to thank Jeremy for for being here and Jeremy you have filled us with so much information really appreciate all of your hard work that that brought you to this evening and um, brought all of this information forward and I'm sharing once again the screenshot about your books the cemeteries of Sonoma County California a history and guide uh, that was uh, published I believe what was that 19 or uh, 2001, and then also your 2009 book, 
potter's field. Uh, and please do, if you look those up, you can look those up on Amazon. Uh, and you can also look them up by putting in Jeremy's full name, Jeremy Dwight Nichols, and those two books will come up. Um, Jeremy, do you have any last words for us? Uh, it, you, know, you have been the star of this hour. Thank you again to the Historical Society of Santa Rosa for having us. And, and Jeremy, I'll leave you with the last, last few words. Okay, uh, I wanna thank everybody. Uh, if you have more questions or want to pursue any of this, uh, please send me an email. Uh, if you think the Pythian Cemetery should be restored, please call or write your county supervisor. It is their responsibility and we'll figure out who owns the land. But as a cemetery, regardless of where it is, it's still protected and there's no reason why we can't fix it up a little bit more. So thank you very much and good night.